guys, welcome back. This is the pickup from mytutorialrack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to call our first SOAP API using the Postman. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to log into Salesforce using our username and password. And by doing that, we are going to get a session ID. And that session ID will be used for our upcoming request to Salesforce. So the first thing is whenever you are making a SOAP request, these are the four steps that you need to define. The first step is you need to choose the method and the endpoint. So as you can see here in the last tutorial, we, we saw that there are different kinds of methods that are available to choose from. We had a get method, post, put, etc. So first thing is you have to select the method type and then this is going to be the endpoint URL. So this is the URL to logging into Salesforce. So whenever you are logging into Salesforce, you need a username and password. So we need to send this username and password in our request body. So the second thing that we need to do is we need to set the headers. The headers that we need to set is going to be the content type means what is going to be the content that you're going to send in the request. So you have to tell that, hey, it needs to be an XML. And the second thing you have to define is the SOAP action. Uh, we will leave this SOAP action header as blank. And then the next point we need to do is we need to set the body. Okay, so the first step in order to make any SOAP calls to the Salesforce, we have to first authenticate ourselves. And when we authenticate using the username and password, we will get a session ID. And that session ID will be used for our upcoming request. So this is how the request body looks like. And when we're making a SOAP call, you can see here, it has a parent tag called the envelope. And then inside of that, there is a tag called envelope body. So we are going to send the body and in the body we are sending the username password and the security token okay and then we will see what's going to be the response so let's go ahead and test this out so i'll go back to my postman here and i'm currently in this collection that i've created if you have not created the collection go ahead and click on the new collection enter the name and then any request that you're going to we're going to make just go ahead and save that inside of this collection so once I'm in the collection, I'm going to open the launch pad and then here I'm going to create a request. So right now I have not given any name, but we'll give it in a minute. So first we're going to create, choose the method type. It's going to be of the post and what is going to be the endpoint URL. So we have to log into Salesforce. Okay. So the URL that I'm going to do is going to be HTTP login.salesforce.com. This is going to be the request URL. Okay, so you can, you're going to choose services. We're making a SOAP and this is the API version. Then the next thing that we need to define is the header. So the header is going to be the one thing I have to define is the SOAP action and uh, it's just going to be blank. Now, what is the purpose of this header? It is just to tell the intent of your service provider. This is the header. So we have to leave it blank. If we don't provide this header, we will not be able to make the call. Then go to the body and we are going to send in XML because in the SOAP, you can only send XML. You cannot send JSON. If you want to send JSON, then you have to use the REST APIs. So here we are going to choose the body. So go ahead and select the XML here. So if I do here text and XML, and if we go back here, we have to set the content type as well. Okay, so this is going to be the another header that I'm going to set up and that's going to be text slash XML. This is going to be the content type and then the body. So the body is going to be, this is going to be the body. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it inside of here. And I have to replace it with my username and password. So what's the username here? If you remember, we had the username. If I go back here, I can choose from the settings. And this is going to be my username. So let's go ahead and put this as the username here. Now this is going to be, you have to do it one time. Because once you do this, you're going to get a session and that session ID you have to send in our upcoming request that we're going to make to the Salesforce. Now the password I had was password 
one, two, three, and then we also need to add the security token. So here, I'm gonna go back here and uh, go to the settings here. And then here in the quick find, I will look for reset my security token. And then I'm going to reset the token. So this is going to send an email to this address. So let me go ahead and log into this email. And uh, here I'm gonna go to the Outlook. You can see here, this is the security token I've got. Let's just go ahead and copy the security token and you have to put it in your request. Okay, so this is going to be the request. You're making a SOAP request, so you have to send it in this envelope. And then these are just the namespace that they have given. And then this is going to be the body for the message. So you're saying that I'm logging into Salesforce and this is my username. You're sending the username information and you're sending the password along with the security token. So we have set up the headers, we have set up the body, we have set up the endpoint URL and then the request type is post. So let's go ahead and hit the send button. So you can see here, once you hit the send, the status that came back from the server is 200, which means it's okay. So the request went through fine. And then in the response that we got, we got two important things. We will get the server URL. So this is the URL that we are going to use to make any upcoming calls to Salesforce. And then this is the session ID. So this session ID will be used in those upcoming requests. Okay, so you have to send the session ID in the header. So that way, Salesforce, we know that, hey, this is the right user. He has the right to talk to me. So we are authenticating ourselves. We don't want any illegal person to try to enter into Salesforce and try to fetch the data from Salesforce. So in order for us to authenticate, we don't have to keep sending the username, password and get that session ID. You can use the session ID, uh, I think for next 120 minutes and you can use the session ID and uh, you will be able to make your further request with the Salesforce. So let's say next time I want to fetch all the account records or all the student records, etc. All I need to do is I need to send the session ID in those upcoming requests. So this is what the response came back from Salesforce. It sent me the server URL. It's sandbox. It's not a sandbox. It's a production. Password expired is false, means password is valid. This is the URL, this is the server URL, this is the session ID, and this is my user ID, okay? This is the user ID. Now, user info, it has also sent what kind of information uh, about the user. Accessibility mode, what's the currency symbol, all this kind of stuff it has sent. What's the organization name? So all that information has been sent. It has also sent back the user email address, the full name, the ID of the user, and the username as well, and the time zone. So all the information about the user. So let's go ahead and save this request, and we are going to choose this Salesforce integration course collection, and we will call this as SOAP authentication. Okay, so this we are authenticating. This is the first API call that we made to authenticate. We sent the username and password and then hit the save. So you can see here, this is saved now. So we are going to save this use, uh, session ID in the next call that we are going to make, we will use this session ID. In the next tutorial, we are going to make new calls to Salesforce and we'll try to access account data or the student data, etc. So I'll see you then. Thank you.